Hey everybody, Cole here with Classic Mini DIY, and on today's episode, we have some work to do on the teardrop trailer. I'm gonna be covering some electrical system changes, some lighting changes, a fridge installation, and maybe even more stuff, depending on how much we get done in this episode. So, you won't wanna miss it. Like I said, on today's episode, we are working on the teardrop trailer, which is obviously not a classic mini, but I think that's gonna be okay. On today's episode, we are gonna be tackling a few projects that we have been working on on the teardrop trailer. As you can see, there's a lot going on. It's a little chaotic right now, but I'm gonna bring you guys through what we've got going on on the trailer where we're at with certain projects, and give you guys a little update on what we're gonna be doing with it. Now, first things first, let's step up to the front of the trailer, and I'm gonna show you guys a few little upgrades that we've done to make this a little bit more modern and to help support some electrical upgrades down the road. Now, as you can see, we are up at the front of the trailer here, and we've got a few things going on. Now, from the front to the back, obviously we have the tongue of the trailer, we have our mounting jack here to lift and lower the trailer to a perfect level position, but then we have our battery box and our tongue box. Now there is a spare tire that mounts on the side here, but the bracket that we have over here is a little bent, so we're working on fixing that. But focusing on this battery box, we've done a few upgrades over here. Now this box is made for a group 27 size battery and what we had in this trailer before was a AGM 80 amp hour deep cycle battery. Now for those of you who don't know a lot about electronics, the AGM deep cycle batteries are really good reliable batteries for an RV and they allow a much higher discharge rate than say a standard lead acid battery. However, they don't allow you to discharge that battery to 0% and as a result, you're leaving a lot of power on the table, especially when you're using it for something like an RV or a teardrop trailer. And so what we decided to do was upgrade our battery to a lithium ion battery. Now the battery we chose here is a 100 amp hour battery. We opted for just a little capacity increase because we are gaining about 50 amp hours just by switching to a lithium ion battery and Adding that additional amp hourage allows us for more off-grid time when we're using our trailer. In the process of choosing this battery, we also selected this one because it does have a self-heating system. When it measures the temperature being lower than a certain point, it actually starts to heat up the battery to ensure that the lithium battery is going to perform the highest level it can in all weather environments, which is pretty cool because lithium batteries are very susceptible to cold weather and if it starts to get below freezing or much colder, um, your battery is not gonna be performing as well. Now, we ran two primary leads here. Right now they are connected to a trickle charger, but when we're ready to have power on our trailer, we simply unplug this here and plug it in right here. This is using an amp style connector. They're made for high amperage connections and we have a four AWG wire running here. In addition to that, we found that the trailer harness was actually pretty worn out and tired. So I went ahead and picked up a brand new uh, wire harness from Nylite. They are a wonderful channel sponsor and I have a few upgrades on the back of the trailer I'm doing as well that I'm gonna go over in a little bit. But I wanna say a huge thank you for them sending this out as well as the lighting upgrades that they sent out. This was an enormous improvement on what we had previously in the trailer. This is one of your standard seven pin connectors that we have here in North America. And this is what powers essentially all of the lighting on the trailer that is not part of you know, your living space. This does your running lights, tail lights, brake lights, turn signals. Um, it also, with some of the electrical setup that I am going to show you guys in a minute, we also now support alternator charging directly to this battery through a split charge controller, which I'm gonna cover in just a minute. Now getting to the inside of the trailer is where some of the bigger upgrades are starting to take place. 
And we have anything from electrical upgrades to cabinetry upgrades, which I don't know that we'll get fully flushed out for this episode, but we might update you guys in a short or a smaller episode in the future. But right here behind our heads, this is a small compartment that we have used to kind of accommodate some of our electrical upgrades. Let me show you. Okay, so this is where things get a little bit more interesting and also a little bit more chaotic. You guys can see in the back here, behind where our heads go, we have a few different electrical things going on. Now there is a little bit of wire cleanup that I need to do here. This is very much a work in progress, so bear with me here. What we have set up now is a Renogy dual charge controller. And as you can see here, the way that this works is you have a feed from your alternator. And in my case, it's coming through the trailer harness plug, a feed from your solar panel, and then an output to your battery. And this Renogy charge controller does the job of actually modulating, controlling, and balancing power that's coming from your solar panels and your alternator, intelligently charging your battery up to its full capacity. And all of that is done through a Bluetooth app and this controller here. In addition to that, we now have a Renogy Smart shunt, this right here, is a small unit that is used to measure how much power is being used and how much power is left in your battery. This is what's gonna give you that 100%, 0% indicator on the iPhone app or through one of the little Renogy One um, control panels that we hope to add in the future. Now you can see here we have three little breakers. Each one of these is going to one of the hot sources being run into the charge controller. So we have our solar panel, which is not connected yet. I don't have that wired up yet. The alternator, that goes to the trailer harness. And then the battery, that is where all of the power is being sent when the battery is charging. Now we do have a few distribution panels here, one for the positive side and one for the negative side. This just helps me consolidate wires into single places. And then all of that goes down to the battery. Now, additionally, we have some wires running through the opening here into the compartment that's underneath our bed. Now, all of those wires that come out and go underneath the bed, and there are a few that go up and over our heads as well. Those are the factory wires. All of those will ultimately be running back to a set of cabinets, which will be housing something called a power converter. And that looks like this. This power converter is pretty straightforward. And it's important to note that this is not a power inverter. Um, it has a very specific job and you will see these in RVs a lot. Um, I made a few modifications to it, specifically this fan here. Um, but what this does is it will allow you to run shore power. Now shore power is a plug that goes into the side of your teardrop trailer. And this power is then used by the trailer as a priority when you are running things like lights and, and your fan and a refrigerator, any of those things. So you can power much higher amperage things or things that are using AC voltage um, straight through this shore connector right here. And this power converter will also convert that power and charge your battery from shore power while it is plugged in. It's pretty cool. The way that it works is essentially you have your shore power coming into a single 30 amp breaker. That's this one right here. Then you have a 15 amp breaker that powers this whole charge controller unit on the side here. And it is converting that 30 amp power into usable DC power for your battery. And then this runs out to your battery as well as multiple individual DC circuits. And as you can imagine, converting power from AC to DC voltage does generate a little bit of heat. And so it does come with a factory fan. One thing we found on our old power converter is that the fan was really loud. And as someone who builds computers and really enjoys that side of my life, I have a lot of experience with really quiet fans, specifically ones from Noctua. So this fan I swapped in, it's the same size, and it's going to be a lot quieter than the factory one that came inside this unit. Then we have one more 15 amp breaker, and that's going to run to a single 
120 volt outlet that we'll be able to use for things like laptops, toasters, things that we wouldn't be using a lot while we're out on the trail, but it would be good if we have access to shore power to be able to use those things. One important thing about the fact that this is a charge converter, not an inverter, is that an inverter would allow your DC battery to power those 120 volt outlets. In our case, this is a little bit simpler and it only allows us to use those 120 volt outlets when we are plugged into shore power. Otherwise, everything else has to be powered by DC if we are off grid. So this is gonna go inside the cabin and it's going to be pretty simple to install, but um, when we get to that, I will show you guys just how I install this because I found that there are not a lot of good videos on the internet and I have a little bit of experience making videos. But while we're back here, I do wanna mention two other things. You'll notice that there are two outlets here and these are both for water. Now, the one on the right, this metal connector is for a simple hose connection. And this is what is called a city water connection in the US. This is what the common name is for it. And essentially what this will allow you to do is connect a hose from say like an RV site or something like that. And that water is pressurized. So you do have that water pressure coming from the city. You'd plug it in right here and that would fill up a tank or allow us to use a faucet, something like that in the event that we have a water system, which we will. Now, in addition to the city water hookup, we also have a fill spot for our non-pressurized water. This is going to fill up a tank that is present in the rear of this teardrop trailer. We did have one in there before, However, after a little bit of inspection, we found some really, really gross, gross lines existing in the system already. So we opted to rip all of it out, replace it, and we're gonna have a nice clean system that we are going to take care of over the years instead of what appears to be complete lack of uh, care and consideration to that water system from the previous owners. Now getting to the back of the trailer, this is where things start to get pretty exciting. Um, you can see that there is a lot taken out of this right now and we are kind of like right in the middle of a construction phase on this and We are doing quite a few updates changes and tweaks to make it a little bit more well suited for us and what we want out of a teardrop trailer So first up you'll notice there's a big void right here This used to be a set of cabinets and drawers We took those out because what we're going to be doing is installing a pull out grill which is going to be a propane grill. It's going to make it really simple to take apart and set up our camp cooking situation. Um, you'll also notice that there is a small piece here that used to be a sink. Now the whole water system that was in here also had a small faucet and a sink up here. What we ended up finding is that the sink wasn't really as useful to us as we wanted. We can set up an external sink in like a you know, wash basin and wash stuff outside of the sink and reclaim some of this counter space. And now that we have that filled, we are gonna be wrapping this in a new countertop linoleum. You'll notice that there is a little bit dated looking style linoleum here that just really didn't suit what our style preferences were. So we're gonna change this. We haven't decided exactly which one yet, but we have a few contenders. My wife also installed this peel and stick tile on the back here. This is simply a sticker effectively of subway tile. We covered up a few holes that were no longer being used and installed a little USB port right here. That's got USB-C and USB-A. A, B, USB-B, I can't remember. The other thing we did is changed the flooring here. This is also a peel and stick tile, but is a PVC style tile. So it's a little bit more robust and it is directly laid on top of the existing linoleum. So we don't have to worry if water gets in between these cracks or anything like that because there is a waterproof layer already there. But we just wanted to try out some kind of funky new designs and stuff that we might not necessarily try in our house. And this is what we came up with. Now moving on to what I think is kind of the showcase item in the back here. This is a fridge that Viver sent over to me to review. And what used to be here was simply just an opening with a 120 volt plug in the back here. That 120 volt plug didn't work when we were not connected to shore power, so it made it kind of useless. Um, and what most people were doing here was just putting in a cooler. 
Now we do have access to wonderful setups and really like cost effective uh, mini fridges and things that can fit back here. And Viver sent this one over. This is a 19, 16 quart, I forget exactly how big it is, um, little fridge. Now we wanted an easy way to access this fridge because as you can see, there's no way to just directly open it. So in addition, we picked up a 500 pound uh, low capacity uh, set of rails, um, drawer poles with a lock on them. And Haley in her immense skill basically took all of the old cabinetry that we're not gonna be using anymore and cut it up and reused it to make this whole drawer pole right here that also clears the little locking mechanism here for the rear hatch. So now when we are ready to use our fridge, we simply press down on our lock and we have a fridge perfectly accessible here. And this is an enormous upgrade for us because obviously, like I said before, you either had this kind of awkward balancing act with the fridge or you had to pull the cooler out, set it on the ground. It just became kind of tedious and annoying. This makes the whole setup very easy to do. And the best part is that this fridge is a DC power fridge. So I ran a new DC uh, circuit back here and this is powered directly off of the battery, so it means it stays on all the time and won't be tied to shore power, which makes this trailer now a little bit more off-grid than it used to be. Now, on this side, we are gonna be doing some water system with a new tank and piping and pumps and all this stuff, but I'm gonna save that for another episode. The last thing I wanna talk about is what we've done with the electrical system on the rear of the trailer. But why don't you take a little peek a little bit lower here and I'm gonna show you guys my new brake light system. So this is a 2012 teardrop trailer that we purchased and it did have some kind of old fashioned chrome lights on the back. You can actually see the marker lights on the side are surrounded in chrome and it doesn't look bad, but the ones in the rear were really tired. And so I did work with a wonderful company I mentioned earlier in this video, Nylite, and they sent out a brand new set of these sequential turn signal rear taillights. And what's cool about these is all of the functions that they have. So I'm gonna pop up to the front and I'm gonna show you guys a few of the different sequential um, behaviors that they do um, and show you guys why I upgraded them. Now, to start off, what I did is rewired the taillights so we have actual running lights on this vehicle. And you'll notice that on the brake side, you're gonna have the running lights turn on, very nice and subtle running lights. So you can see those now. And on the sides, we also got the running lights working again for um, just the visual representation of the fact that this vehicle does exist when it's very dark outside, you get a little bit more awareness. Now we also connected up the sequential turn signals. These sequential turn signals are tied both to the brakes and for each individual turn signal. The wiring on this trailer doesn't allow for independent operation of those. But when I hit my left turn signal, you'll get a sequential sweep that shows the direction. So if you actually turn the turn signals on, you're gonna have more of a behavior like this. And when the brake lights are hit, you're gonna get both lights turning on, but they are still gonna do that sweep first while applying that brake. So you can see the right turn signal behaving the exact same way. And of course, if both of those get power, they're gonna apply the brakes. Now what's cool about these lights is that they have more functions than what I showed you here. So unfortunately, the wiring system in my vehicle here in my teardrop trailer doesn't allow for a ton of variability. But in the event that you had more complex wiring set up, you would be able to do things like reverse lights or full engagement of the brake lights. What I wanted was that sweeping style. That was what was most important to me. And of course, the running lights for the side and the rear. So you got a little bit more awareness of, you know, the vehicle when it's moving down the road. So the last thing that I just wanna mention before I wrap up this video is what we are gonna be doing on the next episode, and that is going to be installing a solar system. Now, um, oh, that's funny, a solar system, not what I meant to say. 
But we are gonna be installing a solar panel right up here on the top. And then in the future, if this doesn't provide enough amperage, enough watt hours for our um, battery up in the front, we might supplement this with an additional one on the bottom here. But what we're gonna be doing is installing a 100 watt solar panel. That's what this one is right here. And then we are going to be installing a little grommet right here that is going to allow these wires to run in in a waterproof way directly into the system and down over to that charge controller that I showed you guys earlier in the video. This is not something that I'm gonna be doing in this episode though. I probably will do a individual episode on the solar system, um, maybe, we'll see. Uh, but just wanted to show you guys this. Lots of other little things that we're gonna be doing on the trailer as well. But I wanted to give you guys just a little bit of an overview of what we're doing, kind of how we are progressing on this trailer and why I haven't posted a whole bunch of other videos on it just yet. We're doing a lot of tweaks. And once we have it just the way we want it, we're gonna just enjoy it. The whole purpose of this was to get out, get outside. You can see we've got the roof rack up here for the bikes and just spend time with our dog. Unfortunately, our Great Dane passed away last year, which was extremely difficult. In fact, it is still very difficult. It's very raw, even though it's a year later. He was a very, very wonderful dog and our little staffy that we adopted right before our previous dog passed away. Um, he is much more outdoor friendly. He's definitely much more of an outdoorsy dog than Damon was. Damon was a little prince and he just absolutely adored being inside, lounging, being lazy. Um, but Sully, our new dog, he is into being outside. He likes hiking, he likes exploring, he likes just lay laying outside, especially in the sun. Um, he does his little splutes and then like basically deploys his solar panels because he just loves being in the sun so much. So we are capitalizing on that and bringing him camping with us as much as we possibly can and making lots of wonderful memories. I'm gonna bring you guys along for the journey. Um, I'm not gonna do as many how-to videos on the teardrop trailer because those do take quite a bit of time and I just wanna kinda of show you guys what we're doing here. I might do a how-to video every once in a while. You guys know me. I'm classic mini DIY, so I like to DIY stuff. So anyways, if you have any questions about what is going on on this trailer or the wiring system, I can share pictures, videos, all sorts of different stuff. Um, happy to help you guys out if you're embarking on a trailer camper journey yourself. Um, but yeah, that's about it. Thanks so much for tuning in. And I guess until I see you on the next one, enjoy those minis and motor on. See you guys.